All right, we are back. And what I thought about as I was kind of getting ready to do this next stage is because we started out with like the warm sunset kind of colors, um, I'm going to try to use some of the opposite. So I used a lot of yellow so far. So to kind of maybe start to block in some of these details, I think I'm going to go with purple. So that's this guy over here. Um, I'm a little bit at a disadvantage because of where you are with the camera and where I want to be when I go into paint. So it's going to get a little tricky. We'll see what we can do. So I've got some clouds here. And they already have like some yellows along the edges. So I'm almost thinking that as you go over, you kind of keep them wet and washy and make them kind of fade and disappear. The idea is you do get a lot of purples and clouds in the sunset. You know, the parts of the clouds that start to block the light definitely start to do some of that. Not worried about if I go over and on top of some of this building. I think purple is what I want to get into there too. Might try to avoid the corners. Um, one of my weaknesses right now is I don't exactly know what I want to do with the points of these kind of like pagoda houses. I don't have any reference pictures yet, so that is not a good thing. And I'm going to try to work on that a little bit. Use the magic smudger, my finger. Soften some of that. You know, and I may have to go back and paint another layer of the sunset on top of this you know once we start to get some stronger bolder colors we may end up having to you know you paint a little bit you assess you kind of decide what maybe needs to change or get stronger or better or be transformed A little bit of that down in there. Maybe a little bit over here. Didn't draw any of that. That's just kind of me making it up. But just to have something kind of like you have it on this side, maybe a little bit, of, or maybe it's kind of going over here towards this guy. There we go. Soften it a little bit. Maybe get a little extra purple. Put a little pop in a couple spots where it's just a little bit darker. I'm almost painting this like it was a watercolor for the moment. You know, layering it up. Very wet, very washy. Okay, I'm going to abandon that tiny brush um, for another bigger brush, the same wash brush, just because I think we're going to need that if we want to wash in a bigger area of some purples. And I might neutralize this with a little bit of the brown. I don't want a pure purple. Purple with a little bit of desaturation. So wash some of this in. Maybe it's lost a little too much purple. Grab a little more. Bring that in. Got some like different layers to that. And I think I'm going to bring some of that in right into here. To the kimono. I'm going to leave it off of the hands. I'm going to leave it off of some of the other parts. And I painted the katana sword with a little bit of 
those reflective colors thinking that it will reflect some of the sky and then I can always kind of paint more of a metal color on there later. A little more purple and maybe we'll get cooler as we go down add more purple to it I was thinking more blue for the kimono or maybe that's just the female version of the uh, what that is called but we'll just keep it going for now the shirt the gi the I don't know what's called I don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I do. Just kind of unify this all by adding kind of like a glaze layer, a thin layer of purple brown to it. Kind of get the bottom part of this arm into that shadowy, darker zone. Really just try to, you know, get some values in here. This is how you build it up. You know, you can paint a very opaque way, but this is, I think, a more, you know, more of a, formula that you can kind of consistently build up. You get some nice uh, base colors, some base values, and then once you have that, you can start to add some highlights and add some um, details at that point. But if you can wait for a little bit and just build up those values first, I think you're in a better spot as you get started on those details. Things kind of feel more put together. You know, this is starting to already have like a whole picture kind of feel to it. And it has a lot to do with how I've been building it up. A little more purple. Get already some brown there. Get some water. Mix it around with my brush. I had a couple spots where I start to see some streaks coming through, and I don't want that. I don't want any random surprise purple streaks. Get a little on this guy. There we go. This is starting to work. This brown purple mix is starting to give me kind of like a, you know, a mauve earthy kind of tone. And things are starting to show up where they're supposed to, or at least how I'm, I envisioned it, which is nice, you know, when you can think you're going to do something and that, that is what happens. Oh, look at that streak. So we'll get some water, kind of scrub it a little bit, brush it out a little bit, should be fine. I don't know where that one came from, that was a big chunk. Random purple. Um, there's definitely a lot of artists that you can look at, and I will try to put some in our link section down at the bottom on our, when I post this to Blackboard, um, you know, I'm thinking of one of the people that I studied with online, um, Scott Fisher is really good, um, Wiley Beckert is another person that I follow a lot, um, Mark Chef is another one, like I can think of a bunch that are these, um, master class online instructors and 
they just uh they do a good job they have lots of videos and lots of stuff that they share that's similar to this donato giancola um if you want more of like a fine arts painter maybe like a vincent desiderio um Get a maybe a little purple on there. I'm gonna do a little bit of wash of a purple on our portrait now. Not on the edges so much, but more kind of like in the center of the face. Maybe on the edge here. I'm thinking that if I can kind of cool those parts down bring those into this darker part, it starts to look more like that dark portrait on a light background. Is there any light hitting his face? Yes, there is, but get this mixed up just a little bit. We'll just go a little extra purple on that left side, inside corner of the eye. And then I'll just pull a little bit of that back away so it's not too strong. Little beard, little neck, a little bit of this. We can always pop our color back in. Get a little more over here on the bottom part of the forearm. Knuckles, the hands, we can really pop those later. I see this is starting to get there a little bit, so hopefully you can see that as well. Um, Pretend like there's like some serrated kind of like hand ironed Get these guys out of the way. You know, hand ground edge on this, and then kind of like pull a cooler part across there. Maybe hit some of these parts just a second time with. I don't know. I don't paint a lot of metal. I don't paint a lot of swords. And that's the one weird thing is I, well, I didn't do any bodies. It was all portraits. And the other ones I was thinking in the Jedi series that I did before for the same project, I did regular Jedi, I did a Sith, and then I did gray Jedi and um, we'll do some blue washes on the outfit here. Um, but back to what I was saying, I did gray Jedi, Sith, and a regular Jedi. And in all that time, I never painted a lightsaber talking about not having painted lots of swords or axes or anything like that. Not much of a weapons painter. I think I'm more interested in the people than I am in the, the weapon. But today it changes, my friends. Today it changes. Today we will add a sword. A little more blue. This isn't changing a lot of this very much, but it is a little bit, which is sometimes all that counts is those little bits and those little notes that kind of start to separate things, get them closer to where they need to be, or at least maybe even just make you see more clearly personally as you're making your piece what you need to do, what you need to change. Uh, 
I'm going to take into a little bit of a phthalo green and a blue mixture with a touch of black. See if I do a little bit of a hit on some of these shadows. Some of this, some of this here. Just trying to make some of those forms and planes that we had kind of like shaded in before. Make those kind of pop out. We could make this try to look very Caravaggio eventually. I think we have enough with that kind of coloring started. Just a little bit down in these cracks here, underneath the beard here. You know, and every little bit, it's just popping it a little bit forward, making this a little bit darker, making that a little bit brighter. Blue, purple, a little touch of green. Another layer of dark down here at the bottom. Get this in under the arm. Over here, the armpit. All right, this has been a longer passage, so I think I'm going to give it a pause and let things dry a little bit.